thank you, Jesus. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and give God thanks for the great and made it possible for us to be in his presence today. Celebrate and magnify him. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. I want us to know the prophetic focus for the month is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. The subject of prosperity does not answer to prayers nor fasting. It answers to applied truth. Applied truth. So it's taught. I'm the Lord that teacheth thee to profit, that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. You diligently hearken to my voice. Observe to do what I tell you to do. I set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. So it's taught. It's applied revelation that results in our access to every provision of redemption. Know what it takes to get it. Commit yourself to it. You have committed God's integrity to confirm it. Whatever it tells you to do, do. It will terminate your struggles, bring an end to your frustrations, and bring you breakthroughs that no human effort can afford. Lord, teach me today. I must return with the master key in my life, in my hand. The master key to a world of business breakthroughs. Reveal to me today, Jesus. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Reveal to me today the secret of unending breakthrough in business, breakthroughs in life. Reveal that to me today. Open my eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open my eyes today to behold wondrous things out of thy law. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. We are all seated at your feet today, Jesus. Let no one return disappointed. Amen. Open new chapters to everyone's life. Amen. Deliver the key to an ending breakthrough to everyone's hand. Amen. And take all the glory. Hallelujah. In this month of financial fortune, open the financial destiny of every child of God. Amen. Let no one be without a turnaround testimony this month. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Amen. Amen. As declared on Wednesday, the prophetic focus for the month of July 2020 is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. Now for someone that may be new, let me tell you what to do here. We have 12 fundamental teachings that take place every year. They are all topical issues under our three core messages. The word of faith, the word of science and wonders, and the word of prosperity. And so this month, we are focusing on prosperity. And I want to believe, now because this has become a balanced diet in this commission, we run it like a syllabus. It is every year. And the coming as directed by God every month. So we are teaching prosperity this whole month, both in our midweek services, in our satellite fellowship meetings, in our exhortations there. That's what we do. As commanded by the Lord. So it's not picked because this is what we should do now that people can give. No. 
this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When we switch on to vision, we will not know that we know anything about prosperity. We switch on to prayer, we switch on to consecration, and to live right and live acceptably to God. We do that every month. And there is no man without testimonies in the lives of people. Your own testimony must deliver this month. Amen. We took that by inspiration from Revelation 22. How that um, in the midst of, now let's start from verse 1 and 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the seat of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Can I hear your amen? amen. So we have the word of faith mandate, which is the anchor of the mandate. The liberation mandate. We have the word of science and we have the word of prosperity, and then we have the word of science and wonders. And each of those three core messages have three subtopics under them that will make that, those messages deliver. And that's what we call the 12 pillars of the commission. Praise God. So if anybody coming in here for the first time and you are hearing us blowing hot on prosperity, this is the month of prosperity. Can I hear your amen? amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. The teaching series for this month has been cap captioned Gateways to Financial Fortune. And the anchor scripture is 2 Corinthians Chapter 9 and verse 8. And to understand that, let's start from verse 7. I mean, verse 6, sorry. He said, But this I say, he which sweat sparingly shall also live sparingly, and he which sweat bountifully shall also live bountifully. So every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, not of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. And in response, God is able to make all grace abound towards every such giver. That he always, having a sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Having a sufficiency in all things equals fortune. All sufficiency in all things that you may abound unto every good work. So the abundance is to make you abound in every good work. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a man who has such abundance but does not, did not abandon any good work. So he said to his soul, rest. You got enough now to live until you die. And God said, tonight we are living. I give you the abundance so you can abandon in every good work. Now that you are not ready to abandon every good work, you have tried. Come over. Now listen. For a long time, the charismatic have centered on the access to prosperity without defining the purpose of prosperity. So that has placed a, an awful limit on the level of prosperity you can get. So what people have said is mainly for living, not for impacting on lives. Because the purpose is not known. The purpose is not understood. Solomon saw or uh, understood the access, but he did not understand the purpose. So it spoiled him. Prosperity wrecked him. Now, Solomon offered a thousand more offerings, and for that, God added to him riches and wealth. That's okay. Ah, he said, this thing works. Out. So he went on and offered 22,000 oxen and won 20,000 sheep as sacrifice. His wealth skyrocketed. What will I do with all these things? 
Let me start marrying wives. So he married 700 wives and 300 concubines to support. The Bible classifies all of them as strange wives. They were 1,000. Because he had no understanding of the purpose. That's why we need to understand the purpose adequately in order to be able to make the most of our portion of kingdom wealth. We serve a God of equality. There is no respect of persons with him. We have equal redemptive potentials to operate in the realm of financial fortune. But we need to grasp the purpose of it. From First Chronicles chapter 22, I'm beginning from verse 7. David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my heart. My mind to be that house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, myself, saying, Thou hast shed much blood abundantly, because thou hast made great wars. Thou shalt not be that house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth. Behold, the son shall be born of thee, or to thee, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, so it's prophetic. And I will give him peace and quietness to Israel all his days. He shall build a house to my name. And he shall be my son and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. That's God's idea. So it's prophetic. So the prosperity that was granted him was to execute that project. Amen. Amen. All he would have said, what more would you have me do, Jesus? Oh God, what more would you have me do? So he began to engage the assets, but not understanding the purpose. And so the same Solomon built one temple only for God, who empowered him for wealth, and built a thousand shrines. They called them high places. Amen. Then the Solomon built a high place for Shemoth, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which he bought incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So he built high places. High place for those idols were temples. Were what? So Solomon built one temple for God and 1,000 for devils. Wealth is a cause without understanding the purpose. There was no way a man can know 1,000 faces. So when you go there as a wife, you say, what number are you? Are you? you say, number 21. Okay, that was what he had. <laughs> so you have wife number 922. Wife number 1,000. You have to come by numbers. He built royal palaces for each of them, as it were. Beginning from the daughter of Pharaoh. Because he didn't have understanding of the purpose. So it wrecked him. You know where Solomon ended? Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Did you see Solomon worshiping in the houses of those gods and goddesses? Solomon who prayed that the glory of God down to the temple was crawling before idols. Solomon ended his journey with regret. 
that enormous, enormous word wrecked him because he didn't understand the purpose. Give and shall be given to you. Okay, for what? If they obey and serve him with my blessings on their life, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. My city is through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. I'm empowering you for the spreading of my kingdom. I'm out to shake the heavens and the earth and to shake all nations. The silver and the gold they are mine. I'm passing it through human channels that can be trusted. So the purpose of wealth in these last days in the body of Christ is for the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. For this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached among all nations and then shall the end come. What is all nations? Revelation 5.12. Amen. Amen. He has redeemed us by his blood. Out of every kindred, every clan, that's the many. Every tongue, that means every tribe. And every people, that means wherever people are. A nation. Before Jesus will return, every part of this earth, where human beings live, whether they are walking naked or walking clothed, shall hear the gospel. Amen. And that will become a reality as he channels heaven's resources through faithful saints who will use it for the purpose for which he gave them. Can I hear your amen? amen? Who will be willing to distribute and ready to communicate thereby laying a stuff for themselves against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. They are kingdom driven people. Kingdom addicted people. They are kingdom dreaming people. Praise God. So that is the kind of wealth that has no sorrow to it. Wealthy people in the world, their greatest challenge is sorrow, unrest. They have not come yet. My God, something may have happened. Normally they should be here by now. They say it's time for food. No, I don't feel like eating. Jacob says, no, nothing. I don't just feel like it. <laughs> one man visited me one time. I was afraid for him. The way he was breathing. In the morning. Ah, what's the matter? He wanted to buy a facility. Ah, I said, have you done that kind of business before? No. So... How much do you have? He told me. I said, is it your own money? He said, yes. And you are breathing like this? <laughs> because what to borrow more is what he was looking for. He's looking for international banks and all that. To borrow more to what he has. The way he was breathing, I quickly finished with him. <laughs> I don't have trouble in my hand. <laughs> when God blesses, it is absolutely sorrow-free. People will think you are lying. When they, they see the way you are relaxed. They say, okay, everybody has this problem. They just do it behind the door. I don't have one. Hallelujah. One. They say, it's a lie. Okay, it's a true. <laughs> the blessings of the Lord, yes. it makes it rich and it adds no soul. Hallelujah. That's the one you are breaking into. Amen. Let me hear your loudest Amen. amen. So understanding the purpose is far more important than the answers. Yes, the answer is a risk without the purpose. It is the purpose that secures the blessings that come through the answers. It is the purpose that secures. It was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house to the Lord. And God said, thou doest well that it was in thy heart. You always do well with the kingdom in your heart. With kingdom advancement dreams in your heart, you always do well on the earth. Always do well. Always do well. Always.
back in Matthew chapter 6, he said, so is a man that is not rich towards God. That is, you, you have riches, but it has no connection. So he said, that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Amen. That's talking about the man, the, the, the rich fool. That's not rich towards God. So we are empowered to be rich towards advancing the kingdom of God on the earth. Wherever a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. Verse 21. Now, our teaching series for the month on Sunday, for our Sunday services, is titled Gateways to Financial Fortune. It's one thing to know where you are going, it's another thing to know how to get there. Gateways. You don't carry cash in your hand and go to the international airport and say, Where are you going? You say, I'm going to Italy. Where is the one going? I want to pay. No. You have visa? No. I say, I have the money. I find out how much is the money to go to Italy. You need visa, I say, for what? Will they pay the ticket when I go there? He doesn't know the way to go. So they arrest him at the airport <laughs> as a dangerous man. <laughs> Amen. He knows where he wants to go, but he doesn't know how to get there. The labor of the foolish will is every one of them because he knows not how to get to the city. In my place, when somebody is poor, another one is rich, they say he has stolen the glory. <laughs> <laughs> the glory of the poor. No. <laughs> where did he have the glory? Where did he put it that somebody stole it? His old wife's to fables. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a subject of how. Amen. Amen. Now, let me quickly say this. Every one of us has that valid heritage of wealth and redemption. How? Second Corinthians 8 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though it was rich yet for your sake. I might say he became poor, that we, the redeemed, through his poverty, might be made what? Rich. Now, in Revelation 5 and verse 12, Christ obtained for us, after resurrection, power. Oh, power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go ye therefore. I'm empowering you. I got it for you. Riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. We serve a God of equality. There's no respect for persons with. So you obtain riches for us in redemption. Equal price paid over each one of us. And I heard God say in Romans 10, 12, there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek, between the white and the black. Because some pretend that they are poor because they are black. <laughs> Amen. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. The same Lord over all. A friend of mine came down here some years back and said, Brother David, how do you pay for all this stuff? I said, faith. I said, faith? I said, yes. Faith is a universal currency. It delivers at the same level in every nation of the earth. It's a universal currency. It delivers the same value across every nation of the earth. Awesome God. Awesome God. So we need to learn the ways, having understood the purpose. And I'd like you to please refer to our teaching series during this spiritual week of emphasis, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Please. Please. And learn your way out of struggles. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and things are not working. And I will give you rest. Come and learn. We are used to come and pray. He said, come and learn. And I will give you rest for your souls. What I will tell you to do 
It's cheaper than the weight you are carrying. My yoke is easy. My body is light. Come and learn. No, come and cry. Come and learn. No, come and weep. Come and learn. No, come and explain. No, come and complain. Come and learn. You are breaking forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Well, let's lay this foundation. A passionate pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom is key to a world of supernatural abundance. Why? We are empowered for wealth to advance his kingdom on the earth. So a heart for God is a covenant of qualifier for supernatural abundance. Psalm 102, 13 to 15. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor our year, the said time is come. Now, please listen to me. Financial fortune is a product of divine favor. I will give these people favor. And when they go, they shall not go empty. Exodus 3.21 and the Lord gave them favor and transferred the wealth of Egypt to them. So financial fortune is a product of divine favor. Thank you, Jesus. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon them for the time to favor her, yet the same time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the very dust thereof. Overly committed to the interest of the kingdom. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. Fearful favor. And all the kings of the earth, thy glory. Many are stepping into that realm right now. Amen. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom with one's financial resources is gateway to a world of financial fortune. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Seek ye first. You don't have a second to, to seek. And all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first. And all these things. Do you know that wealth was added to Solomon? He didn't pray for it. What was he praying for? Kingdom first. I'm a child. I don't know how to go out or how to come in. And you ask me to come and occupy this throne. Give me wisdom. I don't want to miss this opportunity. I don't want to get disappointed in me. He said, because you have not asked for riches for yourself. Therefore, verse 30. Mm. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Come on now. So when you place the kingdom of God first, all other things are added to you. Well, it's important to know that God only entrusts his riches to those he can trust. Those who will use it for the purpose for which he gave them. But if you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches? Luke 16 and verse 11. Now, here is the big thing. The platform for empowerment for wealth is the covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God because he is he that giveth power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which is sworn to thy fathers as it is this day. So the question is, what is that covenant? Now, let me explain this way to help us. Every provision in redemption has conditions attached for delivery. When we subscribe to the conditions, the provision graduates to a covenant. It becomes binding on God to perform. 
Now, listen. Every promise of scriptures has conditions attached. When the conditions are fulfilled, the promise graduates to a covenant. So we have the Old and New Testament, which is also called the Old and New Covenant. Both are ratified in Christ. Matthew 5, 17. Praise God. I'm out to empower you for wealth on the basis of my covenant of empowerment for wealth. What is that covenant? 1982, March 22, I had this awesome encounter with God when I went out in search of the secret behind kingdom prosperity. My God sent mentor, Dr. Kenneth Copeland and his wife, I went with two of their books, which I'd read before, and my Bible, and went with my heart to return with the answer. On the third day, the heavens opened. I was on this room, chapter 8 and verse 18. And God said, my son, David, now hear me. Many of us have been reading scriptures. We will soon start hearing scriptures. Yeah. Behind every statement of scripture is the voice of God. So they call it Rema. They call it what? Rema. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Isaiah 34, 16. None of this shall fail, neither shall anyone tell me. For my mouth, my God, it has commanded. And my spirit, it has gathered them. So the mouth of God is behind every scripture. He said, my son, David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. So it does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. And until your part is played, I am not committed. Raw rema, raw, raw rema. And I said, Jesus, what is that covenant? He said, why do you have to remain? See time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. What? Because I've been, hearing that I've been teaching to myself, so I now saw that is the only way to get him powerful. Well, I said, how reliable is this covenant, Jesus? It was an awesome mountain of encounter. He said, in Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21, I wasn't scribbling, I wasn't struggling to find where they are. If you can break my covenant of the day or my covenant of the night, and I should not be there at night in their season, then may also my covenant with my, daughters, my servant David be broken, that he should not have a son to reign in his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, I jumped. Because I've been redeemed unto our God as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. I will have Mr. Amitabh to be for David only. But now I find out, it's his covenant with all the redeemed. And I hear your amen? amen? That means every covenant of scriptures is as binding on God as the covenant of the day and of the night. So as long as the day and night keeps exchanging position, God's covenant remains in force. Now, here is what he said. He said, my son, every time you wake up in the morning and you see the sun, then know that my covenant is in force. You look up in the night and you see the moon, then know that my covenant is in force. What? So I stood up and spun like a cocaine, cocoon, and Scream! Yay! I can never be poor. That was my bailout. That awesome encounter just showed me what it takes to get complete divorce from poverty and all its appearances. So if you are not interested in the covenant of Sitam and Harvest, you are not a candidate for kingdom wealth. You are not. There's no point trying. You are not. You'll be limited to earthly wealth, which comes along with plenty of sorrow, concerns, uncertainties, unrest, apprehensions, 
and God forbid hypertension. Because when tension is not controlled, you become hyper. <laughs> you won't see that kind. Amen. So the covenant can be defined as a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. Amen. Amen. That means I vow to do this by my integrity if you will do this. You have committed my integrity if you fulfill these conditions. Simple. And how powerful is this covenant? It delivers under all circumstances. Favorable or unfavorable. There was famine in the time of Abraham, Genesis 12, 10, and Abraham became very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. There was famine in the time of Isaac. God said, Isaac, don't get out of here. Stay here. And Isaac had some bit or some levels of opposition. But a year turned in, Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. He worked strong. He went forward. He became very great. He became the greatest employer of labor in the land. And the Philistines envied him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isaac became a nation. So they asked him, you get out of here. Verse 16, Genesis 26. Because you are mightier, much mightier than we. Abba. He was mightier than the nation. And verse 26, Abimelech went to him that this man, if you don't make peace with him, he can overrun us and turn us to slaves in our country. So they went to make peace with Isaac. We saw certainly that the Lord was the one at work in you. You are not playing games. So. And we said, let there be now an oath. Between us. It was the trade union that gathered together to get him out. <laughs> and let us make a covenant with thee. Amen. That thou will do us no hurt because you have power to hurt us. You have power to capture our king and take us captive. He had an army like Abraham, his father. In the time of famine, it was blossoming. No, please know that we have not done you anything. We have done you only good. We only ask you to go because you don't understand it. <laughs> that now the bless of the Lord. We saw that getting you out didn't reduce you. You are just multiplying. Now he went to him with the captain of his army. That's the chief of army staff. That's not a local government. So Gera was a nation. Glory to God. So it's not strange. Economic challenges are not strange. But the covenant is superior to every negative economic condition. So your breakthrough is guaranteed under all prevailing economic conditions. That's why you've heard people share in testimonies of breakthroughs under lockdown. Breakthroughs under lockdown. Breakthroughs under, not that they are selling masks and all that. <laughs> they new breakthroughs, not. Uh, <laughs> no. Glory to God. Supernatural breakthroughs. Not taking advantage of poor people. I know that some people are just milking the human race through this uh, noisome <laughs> pandemic, <laughs> which is largely imaginative. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs
rules under lockdown means that nothing can lock down the covenant. Nothing can lock down the covenant. Every plan and purpose for your life this year, none shall be lost. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. There was famine, listen to me, in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. Money failed as far back as Genesis 47. Some wicked people are saying it is the population of the world that is the greatest challenge today. How much was the population of the world in Genesis 47? It's wickedness. We sheer wickedness. So you want to kill people so you can reduce and you won't kill yourself. You won't kill your children. <laughs> Abba. Abba. Judgment is around the corner. Yes, yes. Every soul has equal worth in the sight of God. Every soul has equal worth in the sight of God. I don't care what policy is behind it. But you don't have economic catastrophe because of population. Money failed. It was the harshest famine. People offer themselves to be sold. Man. And yet, under the same condition, in the same country, Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the county, called the county of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, and grew, and multiplied their great exceedingly. Ah. That's the power, the superiority of the covenant above all prevailing economic circumstances. Our nation, Nigeria, has gone through a number of uh, economic crises with different names for each one. But not once have we recorded a setback in our financial resources in this ministry in nearly 40 years. The covenant is superior any day, any time to prevailing circumstances. There are people in this ministry that have never experienced any form of setback in their business endeavors. And some are here 36 years old. Some are here 37 years. One of our young ladies turned 100 yesterday. You have that video, please put it up. Put that picture up. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm showing you that because that's where you are going. Yes. None of you serving the Lord will die young. Yes. 2017, one of them went home at 105. Sweet people. They've been here for years, so it's not a church, a church of kids. They've been here for years, serving God with all excitement. Amen. Amen. We serve a God, a covenant keeping God. The number of your days, I will fulfill. So I guarantee you a good old age because you are serving me. Amen. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in their land. And the number of your days, I will fulfill. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the covenant works, and works all the time, and works for all people, wherever they live in the world, notwithstanding. Now, very quickly, let's run through what I call biblical keys to business breakthroughs. Keys are, the, it is a key that guarantees our access to any store. You need the key. You need the key. And the key we're talking about here is knowledge. He said to the lawyers of his days, who want to you lawyers because you have taken away the key of knowledge. You will not enter in and those who want to enter, you hinder them. The key of knowledge. The key of knowledge. 
you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, the key of knowledge. My people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. Isaiah 5 and verse 13, the key of knowledge. First, one must be born again to belong to the breakthrough family of God. As many as received him, he gave power to become what? The sons of God. To become a member of God's breakthrough family. He reigns by his power forever. You become a member of that family. Ephesians 2, verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Every member of that house is ordained a light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be healed. Every member of that house is redeemed with greater potentials than the greatest names in the Old Testament. Matthew eleven eleven. Of all born of women, there is none greater than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So every child of God belongs to that breakthrough family with the greater than Joseph's potentials in you, greater than Abraham's potentials in you and me. Greater than Job's potentials in you and me. Greater than Daniel in you and me. You know, he said, Behold, the greater than Solomon is here. Greater than Solomon, order of wealth lies in you and me. That's why we call it a breakthrough family. Amen. Amen. The least in that kingdom. Carries greater potentials than the greatest of names in the Old Testament. And new birth, which is free, is your access into that area. Please know that in these last days, supernatural breakthrough shall be the core identity of every child of God. We just read in Psalm 87. And verse 1, its foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gates of Zion, which is the church, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Man, glorious things will keep being spoken about the church. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. They'll be men of stature. They'll be captains of industry. Amen. Commanders of economy. Amen. Giant inventors. Amen. And they will be spread across the nations of the earth. There will be no nation where those giants will not be. Praise God. Amen. Wind up, go ahead. And of Zion shall be said, This and that man was born in her. Amen. And the highest himself shall establish her. So it's not political establishment. The highest himself. To have no human hand. The highest himself. The highest himself shall establish her. And the Lord shall count. When he righted up the people, that this man was born there. As well the singers, as the players on instruments shall be there. All my springs 
shall be in thee. All my springs. Everything that keeps life going shall be domiciled inside. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. Now watch. Daniel 7 verse 27. The Bible says, talking about this end time saying, and the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, the nation notwithstanding, shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and no dominion shall serve and obey him. That's where God is taking his church. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Please note the following if you must command breakthroughs in your business endeavors. Number one, seek first. We must continue to seek first the advancement of the kingdom of God to maximize our breakthrough package and redemption. Matthew 6, 33. All these things that people are struggling to have shall be added to you. We must be committed to the covenant of personal and business tithing to keep the heavens of our lives and businesses open. You have that in Malachi chapter 3 and in Hebrews chapter 7 we saw how Abraham paid the tithe of his company. The Lord spoke to me and said, the tithe that Abraham paid was his not personal tithe. It was the tithe of his company. 318 of them that went to war came back and paid the tithe of all. So God said, the same way I opened the heavens over the lives of individuals, he was speaking to me. So I opened the heavens over businesses, trades, occupations, corporations, including churches. I heard it from the mouth of Jesus. September 4, 1987. I never read from a book. From that time, we began to engage in tightening the income of our church. Blessed be the day that that word came. Blessed be the day that that word came. I have watched to see an open heaven over the church. Not that they said, I saw open heaven. There is no economic calculation that will make you add about 7,000 people to your payroll that was not in your budget, and yet there was no stress. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we are working at adding 20,000 more, and there is no concern. Open heaven is real. Open heaven is real. That's the realm you are walking into right now. Amen. I've told the story of John D. Rockefeller several times. He paid the tithe of the first paycheck he earned in life. He was an addicted kingdom promoter. His fortune is still speaking years after he had left. He became the first American billionaire in history. When the doctor said you may not see your 52nd birthday, he parted with 50% of all his stakes in business to serve the needs of humanity. And God said, will I let this kind of man die? No, there are not many of them in the world. My son, live on. He lived to be 93. He lived to be what? You see how many years God added to him? Through genuine heart for God. Because a heart for people is a heart for God. This man was said to have given $140 million at a time to the education fund of his church. This man, in spite of his status, was still serving as a warden in the church. That's life. Somebody is breaking forth. Amen. As we round up, remain committed. 
to kingdom advancement sacrifices as you are able per time. Because you are either building for God, you are building for the devil. You can't be neutral. Amen. You can't be neutral. And sir, there is nothing you are giving that is not from what he gave you. Yes, sir. <laughs> when a man cannot receive anything except you give from above. He said, it's of thee that we are giving back to thee. It's what came from you. It's not that we manufacture it somewhere. A man can receive nothing except it be given from above. We have given thee out of what you have given us. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. For all things come of thee and of thy own have we given thee. So what is the bragging about? You don't know some people are born the same time with you? Who are homeless? We are not saying that to rejoice over them, but to let you acknowledge the grace of God. The grace of God on your life is out of what he gave us. We are giving him, so there's no point pulling your shoulders. Yes, I just gave. And so who gave you first? It's from what God gave you that you are given. Can a dead man give? You are kept alive, and he puts resources through you to give back to him as a channel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord praise, everybody. Yeah. As long as kingdom advancement remains in your heart, no circumstance can bring you down. Amen. No lockdown can get you stagnated. Amen. Whatever can lock down heaven, can lock down God's agenda for your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whatever can lock down heaven, can lock down God's agenda for your life. Yes. It's a new day for you. Yes. Quickly, endeavor to connect with parental blessings. Endeavor to what? Amen. Connect with parental blessings. I'm speaking now very loudly. To the youths of our days. Hmm. Just come see what the blessings of God and covenant channels of blessings did for Joseph. Genesis 49 and verse 22 to 26. Joseph is a fruitful bow. You'll be fruitful when you are under a blessing. Even a fruitful bow by a wall, by a well, whose branch is wrong over the wall. The ashes have sorely grieved thee, the brothers hated them, shot at you and hated you. They carry your clothes down home and say you are dead. And so this is your cloth. They are hunters. But his bow about the strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee? And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above Amen. that's given to the kingdom? Amen. The blessings of the deep that light under, Amen. assessing the secret that enhances the level of blessings we enjoy. Then the blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessing of motherhood. The blessings of thy father have prevailed about the blessings of my progenitors unto the uttermost band of the everlasting age. The blessings of fatherhood. So God recognizes these various channels of blessings for us to maximize his redemptive package for us in life. The blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of fathers. Amen. There is the blessing from heaven above. Do this now. We'll open the windows of heaven. You know, if you don't do this, I'll shut the heaven. Right? And then, the blessings of divine secrets, like it happened in the life of Job. And then, the blessings of the breast and of the womb. And 
the blessings of fathers that cause men to prevail where others travail. Therefore, the word says, honor thy father and thy mother. Which is the first commandment of the law. That it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And so Isaac said, go and bring me. I pray thee, take thy weapons and quiver, thy bow. And go out to the field and take me some venison. Bring me some bush meat. And make me serve all the meat such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat. That my soul may bless thee before I die. To assess the blessings of the soul, you must honor your father and your mother. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's the blessing of the tongue. Blessings of the mind. But to assess the blessings of the soul, you must continue, no matter how worthy they may be, honoring your father and your mother. Well, they are all private. I can't be telling you all of this, but I know what words we have heard, my wife and myself, from my parents when they were alive. Awesome words. Awesome words. We are uncatchable. <laughs> no. We have the blessings of heaven upon our lives, the blessings of the deep. Praise God. The blessings of the breast and of the womb, and the blessings of the fathers. One of our parents said, The things that children do for their parents are the things you are doing for us. You have done this, you have done this. Whatever they do for parents in the life of your children are the things they'll be doing for you. They buy houses for their parents, I mean, build houses for their parents, you did for us. They buy cars for parents, you bought for us. If it's plain they are buying to give parents in the time of your children, that's what they will do for you. One of them said, Have you ever seen the road blocked against a man that has a cutlass? You see Bush block the road. Nobody can block the road against you. Those are blessings of the soul. They are not things you calculate by grammar. They are blessings of the soul. When one of them was living, I saw it. So I dived out on a Saturday morning to go and bid them goodbye. And so he left. I left. Praise God. Blessing of the soul. I've had privilege of spiritual parents that are watching over our lives. I know he said the kind of blessings that come out of them. They don't need anything. No. But I need everything. But I'm speaking right now to your natural parents. Somebody say, I thank God. All of them have died. <laughs> now, the things they should be doing if they were alive, start honoring them now by doing it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Until you kill all of them. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Awesome God. This is what this generation may, may never want to subscribe to. How can I buy something for my father? He doesn't need it, but you need the blessing. You need the blessing. Finally, connect with the blessings of priesthood. Amen? Amen. They are signed to proclaim blessings. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, by prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by prophet was he preserved. He confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. Connect with the blessings that will shatter everything holding you down or attempting to block your way forward by connecting with prophetic blessings. Today, I'm persuaded your struggles are over. Amen. Your struggles are over. Amen. Your struggles are over. Amen. 
And what more? Remain ever joyful under all circumstances. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For that's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And Hebrews 10, 36, after you have done the will of God, you will obtain the promise. We went to a particular city in Nigeria for a crusade. It flopped. The people we hired the public address system from, they came and took it out of the influence of the devil. 30 minutes of the time, so no time. <laughs> no time to worry. I told our team, I said, if anybody complains, that will be the last crusade we ever hold. Would you thank God for bringing us safely to this crusade? And thank God for those 16 people also that came. Amen. And I joined, we joined hands together for me to preach the crusade to them. I, we joined hands together, they won't go. <laughs> and we go to the hotel and celebrate. We celebrated Jesus. Thank you. The next time we got to that same citizen, people were sitting down at 12, waiting for 6 p.m. meeting. If I'm going to that city today, I don't need any advice. They will be here in the night, and I'll be there the following day. And there'll be no place to gather. There'll be no place to stand. Through the mystery of Thanksgiving. You complain too much, that's why things are complicated. You want too much, that's why you mess up so many things in your life. In everything, give thanks. And then, you keep changing your stories. And finally, keep rejoicing. That's where you belong to. Amen. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. Yes. When you stop laughing, you have lost your place in heaven. So keep rejoicing. Hallelujah. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice again and I say rejoice. Otherwise you'll be destroying your harvest. All the harvest of the field is perished because joy is withered away from the children of men. Don't let nothing tamper with your joy. You belong to a breakthrough family. You are a member of the household of God. Nothing can stop your way forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep serving God with joy and gladness. Because they serve not the Lord their God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Therefore shall they serve their enemies. Don't let God turn his back on you. Whatever you are doing in the kingdom is for your profiting. It's for your profiting. Never sit as a burden. Keep serving God with joy and rejoicing. Your business will never go down. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen? Amen. Well, I told you before, I'm not a teacher of prosperity. I'm not... Uh, a preacher of prosperity. I'm a raw messenger of prosperity. Get back home and make my people rich. Let me conclude by saying, somebody gave you 10. He said, okay, return one for me to know that it got to you. You say, no. Okay. Where would the next one come from? When someone you say no to, what is the problem? The title of 10 error is one error. What's your problem? The tithe of 15 naira is 5 naira. What's your problem? But the moment paying a tithe of 1,000 is, is like sucking your blood. You are not near 100,000 blessing yet. Now, if payment or giving of 100,000 naira is painful to your soul, you are not near where that happens. Praise God. Because the tenth of one million is what? Eh? Ah, you say, God, even you yourself, no, I can't give that to <laughs> God said, that's why I can't give you 100,000 blessing. Because it may kill you. But there's somebody here now who is excited in his heart that Jesus, for me to give you a tithe of 100 million as you bless, bless me with one billion, I can't feel it. You know me, Jesus. Mm. I say, okay, wait. I will make a way for you in the wilderness. And streams will flow in your desert. That's how God looks at us. He does not tempt anybody with evil. Whatever will make you miss heaven, he won't let it reach your hand. He won't let it reach your hand. Unless you go and start marrying 100 wives. <laughs> like Solomon. Praise God. Amen. I've never heard any story that Solomon was in heaven. No. I've checked through all these scriptures. We won't find if there's any reference. The blessing wrecked him. But he doesn't understand the purpose. Amen. Well, didn't you see, hear of Abraham in heaven? Yes. Mm. 
You won't miss your place. Amen. Lift up your right hand, everybody. If you got anything from this teaching, give God thanks for it and receive grace to engage with it. Give God thanks for it and receive grace to engage with it. Give God thanks for it and receive grace to engage with it. Give God thanks for it and receive grace to engage with every light you have caught in this teaching. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Well, the good news is this. You are breaking forth into your next levels. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Wherever you are, shout your amen loudest. Yeah. I said you are breaking forth into your next level. Yeah. You are breaking forth into your next level. Yeah. You are breaking forth into your next level. Yeah. Very quickly, there are some individuals here that need to turn their life over to Jesus across the nations of the world. You are here, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, which is a first step into a world of unending breakthroughs. I'll be glad to pray with you. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ today. No matter how far anybody may have gone, he will still receive you. Can I have such individuals in any of these two categories? Raise your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. All, my sins. All my sins. Wash me, Wash me. With, your with your blood. I believe, I believe. You, died me. you died for me. On the third day, the third day. you rose again, you rose again. That, I that I may be justified. Right now, right now. I, believe. I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm, by your blood. I'm, saved. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm, to the faith. I'm not a child of God. Child of God. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord wherever you are right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the same grace that brought you into the kingdom today preserve you for life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. Please send us your testimony of new birth at newbath at lfcww.org. We'll be glad to be part of your joy and partner with you in this journey and you'll make it to the end in Jesus' precious name. We'll all meet on the seats of glory in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Please stand to your feet.